Hey Madhu, first off, this case is a great example of how complex and rewarding these orthopedic challenges can be. The multi-target approach you're using, including the sinus tarsi approach, PRP mixed with bone chips, and the use of per percutaneous screws is really impressive. Well, I love how you're personalizing the treatment into the patient's unique needs. And it sounds like the results are already pointing, you know, to a great outcome. I saw Dr. Senthil Kumar's suggestion and I agree it's fantastic to consider going under the peroneal tendons and exercising the lateral wall to build up the posterior facet. You know, that extra step sounds like a great way to make sure everything stays stable. Sharif Hazarika's point about, you know, considering femoral head allografts or synthetic bone substitutes for structural support is also really thoughtful. I love that, you know, you're weighing all your options and it's really great to hear that the patient's, uh, patient in on um, is really on board with smoking uh, cessation those risks and really need to be managed for the best chance of healing. I'm also, you know, really intrigued by your decision to use Ceramint V or G with freeze-dried bone chips, especially for diabetic patients. It's amazing that you've moved away from iliac crest bone grafts in favor of something that provides stability without extra morbidity. Lastly, Dr. Shakti Swaroop's suggestion of a distraction arthrodesis sounds like an excellent option too. Though I can totally see your concern about skin exposure and, you know, wound healing, the sinus tarsi approach seems like the right call for this patient. Quick question, what's your approach to balancing surgical risk versus the benefits when dealing with patients who have diabetes and smoking history. How do you make that call, you know, when considering different surgical approaches? Thanks for sharing this. Looking forward to hearing more about the outcome.